arm. Carolina Forest is booming, and now a new medical center is going in to meet the need. And if the high cost of medical tests have you putting off a possible procedure, a local health fair is set to help. We've got the steps to help you save. Then a jobs report is out today. We're breaking down the millions of jobs that were added and how our local workforce is faring. Plus the latest on our chilly start and a check of our road. WMBF News Today at 5.30 starts right now. First in high definition. Live, local, late breaking. This is WMBF News Today at 5.30. I tell you, it's a good thing that those roads dried out yesterday because look at these temperatures. 25 in Darlington and Florence right now, 27 in Myrtle Beach. We have just a very, very light breeze, but it's making a big impact. We're talking needing to dress for 18 in Florence, 17 in Darlington. Try to dress for 14 in Laurenburg right now. That's the current wind chill. So sending the kids off to the bus stop this morning, you're going to need to bundle them up with the big heavy coat a hat, gloves, even a scarf to help keep them comfortable. Temperatures in the 20s all morning long. We'll finally get into the 30s late this morning, and then by lunchtime, we'll squeak into the 40s. I'll have the details on the rest of the, your Friday and a peek at the weekend coming up in just a bit. Thanks, Marla. Well, as Marla mentioned, it's really cold this morning, and the roads are clear, so spend a little extra time digging all of that winter gear out of the closet this morning. Not seeing any major delays on 17 at 544 Lake Arrowhead, the back gate, or near Broadway at the beach. Now taking you over to 501, looking pretty clear also all across 501, all the way from Singleton Ridge up towards Ainer. Not seeing any big slowdowns. Real quick look at I-95. I-95 near Florence, and also I-95 to TV Road. Not seeing any delays right now, but if anything changes, I'll make sure to update you on Twitter at WNBF Traffic or right here in just 10 more minutes. All right, thank you, Jenna. 5.32 is your time, folks. You know, being proactive about your health, yeah. it's really the best way to avoid any unwanted surprises. And that's why Grand Strand Medical Center is offering a comprehensive blood test, which can help with that. Yeah, Katrina Helmer joins us live here in the studio once again. Katrina, leaders at the hospital are telling us how important it is to make sure that you know your family history before you get these tests, right? That is exactly right. If you have family history, like the risk of heart disease, thyroid, thyroid problems, or high blood pressure, a blood test can be very crucial to you. And tomorrow's health fair is geared towards anyone, locals, snowbirds, insured or not. If you're tired of getting tossed from one doctor to the next or paying for more multiple tests, the 30 panel blood profile is a good option for you. It's $30 for more than 30 test results. This blood profile will help you decide if you need to seek further care with your doctor. If you think about it, $30 is cheaper than most co-pays. So if you have a feeling that something might be up, you would first have to pay to see your doctor, pay for blood work, then pay if you're referred to a specialist. This blood draw allows you to save where you can. Also, all the test results get mailed right back to you. Then you can take them to your local doctor and bypass the second guessing. We're doing it for the community and those people who need this test, but they don't have the money to pay for all the results that they get out of it. $30 is very cost effective. It's a great way for them if they only have to do it once a year to be able to keep track of their results and to see if anything's changed over the year or not and what to do about it. There will also be a rep for the health exchange to answer any questions you might have as the deadline to sign up will be one week away come Saturday. If you've been online and are not sure what plan is best for you or if you're a complete procrastinator and are just starting the process, they can help give you some advice and direction. Live in the studio, Katrina Helmer, WMBF News. Thank you, Katrina. There are plans to build a brand new medical facility in Carolina Forest to meet the demand of a growing population there. It's all to make sure that you don't have to travel too far for medical services. The new multi-specialty medical building that will be built under Conway Physicians Group, another branch of the Conway Medical Center. It'll be behind the HTC building at AT Carolina Forest Boulevard Extension and River Oaks Drive. The 1.7 acres of land was just purchased. The company is now working with an architect to draw up the plans. The exact services that will be provided in that new building should be released by the end of the month. We're told no word on when construction will actually start. 
Meanwhile, work is underway to make Myrtle Beach more autism friendly. Becky Large is the director of a local parent support group called the Champion of Autism Network. She started sensory friendly movie showings right here in Myrtle Beach. It's when the lights are kept on, the sound is turned down, and the kids are free to talk and move around. Large says it gives parents the chance to take their kids out in the public without the stress and fear of being judged. But it really means a lot to the, to the parents, and I think it, it begins to mean something to the children. I, you know, I, the children get to, to play together and run around or sit down, but for the parents it means a lot to have this kind of experience. That well, if you're interested, the next sensory friendly showing will be this Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Grand 14 Cinema for the SpongeBob movie. For more events she's working on and to donate, head to WMBFnews.com. We have that information in this story under our local tab. Right now is considered, of course, the off season here along the Grand Strand. But this weekend, there is expected to be a significant boost to tourism numbers. And it's all thanks to the state archery tournament that's happening in North Myrtle Beach. That's where we once again find Jenna DeAngelis. And Jenna, it looks like the city kind of hitting the mark with this event. David, you know, even though this tournament is happening inside these walls, our guests of 1,500 people will be here for two days, staying, eating, and spending, which means that impact is right on target. The superintendents of sports tourism for the city, Matt Givens, tells me when events like this are here, that's exactly what happens. The impact expands to our stores, hotels, and restaurants. The National Archery and Schools Regional Tournament is drawing in students, their teachers, and their families from schools from across the state. If you notice, this event is taking place in what's known to be the Grand Strand's slowest time of year. And Givens says that's the point. The city focuses on bringing in large-scale sporting events when business may be low to bring those numbers up and keep the city alive. It also exposes people to the beach who may not have been here before and lets them see what we have to offer during the summer months. The hope is our one-time guests will make a return visit. Our off-season is what we focus on. You know, the summertime we've got, you know, there's plenty of people in town, but you know, the off-season is such a great time here in North Myrtle with the reasonable accommodations, there's plenty to do, great weather. So, you know, we really have an advantage over other areas that are looking for some of these events as well. This isn't the first unique sport to hit the city, and I'm told it won't be the last. This is the sports tourism calendar for North Myrtle Beach for this year, and it features more than just your typical sports, but I'll have more on that later in the show. Reporting live in North Myrtle Beach, Jenna DeAngelis, WMBF News. Jenna, thank you for that. At 537 right now, a family of North Myrtle Beach contractor who was killed in a terrorist attack in Afghanistan will be laying him to rest Saturday. 49-year-old Walt Fisher was one of three American contractors killed in an attack at the North Kabul International Airport complex last week. The Taliban is claiming responsibility for that attack. Fisher's family will hold a visitation from noon until 2 p.m. Saturday, followed by the funeral. The services will be at the conference center at Barefoot Resort. A major employer for the welding industry is moving jobs in Florence out of state. ESAB Welding and Cutting Products announced an engineering team will be moved to a new center in New Hampshire. Officials say between 12 and 14 employees are being affected. They've been given the option of relocating. The change won't happen right away, but should be complete by the end of this year. Company representatives say the move is the result of buying Victor Technologies last April. Well, happening today, a new employment report will be released expected to show a positive bump in the number of created jobs. Mandy Knoll joins us right now to compare the national employment rate to the one that we're seeing right here at home. Mandy, good morning. That's right, Theo. The numbers out today reflect jobs added in January. The most recent count of unemployment nationwide was 5.6% in December. And here in Horry County, the most recent numbers of unemployment are slightly higher at 6.6%. On the positive side, today is expected to come with the announcement of 230,000 jobs added last month, according to a survey by the data firm FactSet. It would be the 12th straight month of job gains above 200,000. That's the longest streak that it's been since 1994. Nearly 3 million new jobs were created in 2014 as the unemployment rate dropped from 6.7% to 5.6 percent. The Labor Department said yesterday the number of people applying for unemployment benefits is near historic lows. That's a positive sign for job growth. At the live desk, Mandy Knoll, WNBF News. A mom is accused of plotting with relatives to have her own six-year-old son kidnapped, all to teach him a life lesson. It was uncovered when the boy told his teachers. Christina Coleman has more. Cindy and Alan Williams live near the home of the suspects arrested for kidnapping the young boy. They didn't talk, they didn't wave, they didn't 
It's like we wasn't even here. But the Williams say they never imagined their neighbors would be facing kidnapping charges. Investigators say the boy's mother, 25-year-old Elizabeth Hupp, his grandmother, 58-year-old Rose Brewer, and his aunt, 38-year-old Denise Crowdle, plotted to kidnap the boy. Deputies say Crowdle asked her co-worker, Nathan Ferrivet, to kidnap her nephew because he was too nice to people. They asked him, hey, can you do this for a family favor? Our son is too nice. He's too open. He's too polite. Officials say Farivet lured the little boy into his pickup truck after he left the school bus. He told the young, the, the victim that he wasn't going to see his family anymore, that he was going to be nailed to a shed, and he'll never go home. Investigators say the boy cried, so Farivet tied him up with trash bags, covered his head with a jacket, and eventually took the boy to the boy's own basement. Deputies say the child's aunt took off his pants and being told at the same time that he's going to the sex slavery trade. The family members felt that they've done nothing wrong and continue to feel that they've done nothing wrong. I'm so glad that our kids did not get go over there. In the 11 years I've been in law enforcement, I've never seen anything like this. When, when this is okay to terrorize a child, to tell them that they're going to die. Well, in Marion County, work um, is moving forward on the Swamp Fox Entertainment Complex. This week, crews are out focusing on landscaping efforts along with pressure washing and painting the standing buildings on the lot. Next, the stage will be restructured and rebuilt to meet code. The new owner of the Old Carolina Amphitheater tells us the first event will be held from May 8th to the 17th and will be the biggest biker bash ever. Brett Michaels, Buck Cherry are just a few expected to perform. A new pacemaker the size of a AAA battery is being called a game changer. Why the smaller size could have a huge impact on the survival of heart patients. Next. And this week, you'll be putting that jacket away, maybe even turning off the heat. I'm helping you plan ahead in my first alert forecast.